Three, two, two one. one. Way! Oh, Merry Christmas! It. Officially the strongest of Lotus Eaters. <laughs> anyway, the 90s were a really weird time, if you were old enough to remember it. I mean, we were born at the tail end. I was 98. When were you? 97. Oh, okay. Well, this is all just retroactive nostalgia for us, but hopefully some of your hey, old you fogies know. actually remember this stuff. Most people look at the 1950s pinups and go, oh, that's not bad. Yeah, I quite like to live there. Yeah. Quite good. Back when a, a woman could actually cook me a decent meal, my girlfriend would burn water. Anyway, they're still being waged today, the Pepsi-Cola wars that define the 90s, and the Pepsi enthusiasts aren't doing so well. So on this Christmas day, I thought I'd treat you to, as a gift to ourselves, watching the aspartame-tainted poison water enjoyers duke it out in fighter jets. No, I am not exaggerating. For more 90s cringe, you can go over to our website and watch series like this for as little as £5 a month, so treat yourself or someone else to... <laughs> Merry Christmas gift. This is Harry and I continuing our Comics Corner series. It's episode three now, talking about the unfiltered cringe of 1990s comics and also DC's Kingdom Come. And we really enjoyed this over two hours, so go and check it out. So the Pepsi Wars, or the Cola Wars, have been reignited with this photo. And you pointed out that it's actually not technically just Diet Coke. It's it's caffeine-free Diet Coke. So. Obviously caffeine-free. Why does nobody but me understand this? Like, I'm not your average Coke drinker, I suppose. So Elon Musk <laughs> tweeted this out. This is a photo of George Washington crossing the Delaware. I think that's Voss water. A revolver. A flintlock pistol. And as, as the founding fathers intended. <laughs> and four cans of caffeine-free Diet Coke. So he does all of his workaholism without any stimulants, which is quite impressive, actually. And this sent most of the general press into utter meltdown. As we can see here with this Washington Post article, Elon Musk and the hardcore cult of Diet Coke. Not diet! Well, it is technically diet. It's diet caffeine-free. <laughs> it's not, not specific enough, but we, we really have to make this work, all right? We have to make our delusions fit a pattern, okay? I mean, it's just like, I, th I saw so many outlets. I mean, again, it's the Washington Post, but, they, you know, not, not some Tim Pot outlet who should... No. The Washington Post is not a Tim Pot outlet, okay, really. Okay, you're right. But, so, <laughs> but, but, but my point being, like, like, so many people got this wrong, and it's like the most basic of facts. Like, what kind of Coke is it? Uh, sorry, just... Real, real pet peeve. So, Musk on Monday tweeted a photo of his nightstand, which bore an odd array of items, including two non-firing replica guns, a Buddhist amulet, and four open cans of caffeine-free Diet Coke. Okay. So, at least admit it in the article. Caffeine-free Diet Coke. That's not Diet Coke, then, is it? It does say Diet on the can. It's, it's not Diet Coke. <laughs> At least in his apparent affinity for the calorie-free cola, he's in vast company. Even those of us who never drink the stuff are familiar with Diet Coke people. They are a tribe whose allegiance to the product goes beyond brand loyalty and into something deeper. Diet Coke people is capitalised. So they're a nation <laughs> unto themselves. <laughs> it's like the black nation of America. <laughs> like so the they Diet just... Coke nation. <laughs> yeah. I hate to think how they conduct the circumcisions. Trump reportedly drank as many as 12 cans a day, and he was said to have used a call button on the Resolute desk in the Oval Office, primarily as a means of summoning a fresh gloss. Ben Affleck is another high-profile fan, so formerly Bruce Wayne himself, another billionaire. He's been seen holding a can in paparazzi photos, and a video posted by his wife, Jennifer Lopez, revealed what looks like a soda fountain in his personal office that dispenses it, alongside confusingly Diet Pepsi, which the cult of Diet Coke famously abhors. So in this article, it links to the next one. This is a real rabbit hole of Diet Coke TDS. And this is from The New Yorker, the decline and fall of Diet Coke and the power generation that loved it. So they say, the release last week of recorded conversation that Michael Cohen, former lawyer, had with Donald Trump, who was then running for president in 2015-16, was notable not only for its discussion of an apparent scheme to acquire the rights to a story about an alleged affair, there was, listeners noted, a desperate drink order in the middle. Get me a Diet Coke, please. Trump, a notorious consumer of soda, cried as the going became devious. I love the editorialising, the over-exaggeration of this. It's, it's sold to us with stage directions. Now it seems Diet Coke is the elixir of soft-bodied plutocrats, desperate to shed their shady pass and possibly a few pounds. Trump, we're told, guzzles Diet Coke instead of coffee. The Times reports his daily intake to be 12 cans, which, at his reported weight, is two cans shy of the daily recommended adult human limit for caffeine. They also said about Harvey Weinstein. How many words is this damn thing? It's ridiculously long. It's like 2,000. Could you imagine, like, I mean, we've written essays. Yeah. Like, it's it's a pain in the ass. Like, yeah. sitting and writing an essay about how this man drinks Diet Coke so he's bad. Well, I mean, at what point do you stop and think, what the hell am I doing in my life? I cannot confirm or deny to have provided feedback on some people's essays when they're attempting to write for Marx so they write like leftists. And I tell you what, you can knock up a predictable left-wing essay on any topic 
very quickly in the space of an afternoon because you're just regurgitating ideological points. Whereas actually being critical, which doesn't get you marks and gets you marked down, will take Pain a very ash. long time. Yeah. So you wonder why outlets like this are just hemorrhaging staff. Yeah, technically, this is fan fiction. Hmm. It's just ranting about how Diet Coke is the source of all the world's evil because the people I don't like drink it. It's the elixir of demons. <laughs> which again, you got it wrong because it's not Diet Coke and Elon Musk's bed stand, but whatever. I should hire you for the PR department, Callum. You might reform their image. In the past, Trump has tweeted, I have never seen a thin person drinking Diet Coke. Fact check, true. One can only assume no. that he was not looking far <laughs> beyond the mirror during these years. So then they get to the checkmate for the orange man, right? That's where they've really got Trump. But you're fat. And he's like, yeah, I know. Oh he's no, like it, gets, it gets way worse. It gets way worse, right? Last week, James Quincy, Coke's president and CEO, told investors that the company will have to raise its soda prices in an effort to rebalance the books. The reason? Trump's tariffs on Chinese imports, apparently, have driven up costs for aluminium and steel. This is, it seems, the rare instance in which the commander-in-chief has not managed to privilege his personal interests. Drink up, Mr. President. A reckoning awaits! So you can't make good old-fashioned American aluminum and steel cans. Instead, the Chinese have got us by the cans of Diet Coke. Okay. To be honest, I, I'm really up for raising those tariffs now. But yeah. I realize it hurts the shitty goddamn bottles. Yeah. Because uh, I want to bring back those glass bottles. Don't know about you. Well, there's plastic on the inside of the Coke cans, so that's... Oh, yeah, there's the, like, yeah. thing inside, isn't there? Yeah, so that's just promoting all the estrogens that you're consuming and the plastic in the baby placentas. Actual microplastics. Glass bottle nationalism. <laughs> so, if they're wondering what they're referring to, Trump did actually have a big red button in the Oval Office... He used to like to press to troll the hell out of people, including diplomats that had never heard of it before. And it just brought in a waitress with a silver tray with a single Diet Coke can on it. And ex-White House aide Chris Sims wrote in his 2019 book, Team of Vipers, that Trump would also use the red button as a way of pranking visitors by suggesting it could trigger nuclear capabilities. Out of nowhere, he suddenly pressed the button. Not sure what to do, guests would look at one another with raised eyebrows. Moments later, a steward would enter the room carrying a glass filled with Diet Coke on a silver platter, and Trump would burst out laughing. Although Biden might have gotten ridden of the soft drink summoner, so I don't think Biden got rid of it. Actually, someone pointed out that Trump probably took it with him. So it's probably in Mar-a-Lago right now as a awesome. relic of the bygone era. He that deserves to be in a museum when he's dead. <laughs> he <laughs> <was> po- <laughs> Just on the gravestone so people can walk past and press yeah. it as tribute. His little soda stream comes out. Pay five bucks. Biden reportedly has similar taste in beverages. A caterer who worked with the former vice president told the Washington Post last year that Biden liked to keep the pantry stocked with Coke Zero. So he much prefers aspartame. So I wonder if neither confirm or deny, that has induced his brain rot in recent years. It is actually banned in the EU, I think, aspartame, because of its link to dementia. I don't know what this is. Aspartame is the sweetener that's in Diet Coke, but it's not in... No, Coke Zero, but it's not in Diet Coke. But it is in Pepsi Max. And aspartame has been linked to brain rot. Huh. Alrighty. Didn't know that. I'm Joe Biden. I endorse this message. Can we, can we say that? Is, that? is that medically proven? I do believe so, yeah. Okay. Oh, because it's banned by the EU, so it's actually... Oh, well, it's officially sanctioned then. (laughs) Yeah. So, Pepsi fans aren't having the best of times, speaking of. We see the Washington Post going out against Diet Coke, and it just so happens recently that a bunch of Washington Post masked-up staffers have been fired because they decided to scream at a town hall where the announcement was given because of their low readership. So, low-T, Diet Coke drinkers losing their jobs. We're seeing the, the dominoes all begin to fall. And then we have notable free speech champion here, Washington Post writer Taylor Lorenz, also temporarily, unfortunately temporarily, suspended from Twitter. So the the Pepsi fans over at Washington Post, not doing so well. Elon Musk took that personally. But then we have this, and I don't know if you've recently watched the new Netflix documentary. I I believe you said you hadn't. We'll go on to the trailer for it in a minute. But we have this classic advert that I wanted to show you just to seed the grounds of a recent development in the Pepsi Jet saga story. Let's play. Introducing the new Pepsi Stuff Catalog. Now, the more Pepsi you drink, the more great stuff you're going to get. Sure beats the bus. (laughs) I don't know if you noticed something important there, but for audio listeners, it was an advert of a very dashing young man going to school 
he puts his Pepsi T-shirt on, his Pepsi glasses, and his Pepsi jacket, which he's won because he's been drinking Pepsi and accumulating well, Pepsi points. At the time, you could win points for drinking more cans. Yeah. And then the joke at the end is, here's a Harrier jet. Oof, seven million points. I don't know. Yeah, he lands in a Harrier jet on the school lawn, says, sure beats the bus. But the thing is, the disclaimer on the ad says that seven million Pepsi points, and it doesn't say it's a joke or you can't actually win this. So some dude actually did drink that much Pepsi. No. What happened was, and this is a Netflix documentary, which... I don't endorse paying for Netflix, but I do endorse watching this documentary. Figure it out. He decided to contact a friend of his who was a millionaire entrepreneur in Florida while he was at college, and he said, I can't drink this much Pepsi because it would take something up to like 400 years if I did like a Pepsi a day. So what the Pepsi catalog said was that you can actually pay for the equivalent number of points. It was something like 15 cents to a point and make up the rest if you really wanted your t-shirt, your glasses, your leather jacket. So he just said to his millionaire buddy, well, a Harrier jet's worth like 34 million, according to the Pentagon, because I rang them up as part of a school project. And they said, yeah, you can buy one if you want, but it can't have the weapons because it's and illegal. 7 million Pepsi points. Well, that equated to about something like $300,000 and whatever Pepsi points he drunk up to at that point. So they just sent the check in the mail. And Pepsi was like, this is a joke. And he went, no, I want my jet. Where's my jet? I want the jet. So the lawyers offered him a million dollars. <sighs> And he decided to go... the classic American thing of, I'm going to sue. <laughs> yeah. And he just decided to go, no, don't want the million. Want the jet. Give me the jet. So the important thing is they hired a lawyer to litigate this. And the lawyer just so happens to be Michael Avenatti of Stormy Daniels fame, who went after President Trump, totally unrelated to his enthusiasm for Diet Coke, I'm sure. And this documentary depicts Michael Avenatti very favourably. There's a point where young Michael Avenatti, being very studious, growing up from a poor background, goes into the law library in the early 80s and sits down and looks up Donald Trump and finds the image of him and Jeffrey Epstein, which was taken about 20 years later, because, of course, they have to frame it as Donald Trump is the ultimate evil, even though they admit that while this was being recorded in 2021, Michael Avenatti was under house arrest while he did all of the interviews. And it's because, if we can just go to our final article here... Michael Avenatti is currently facing 14 years in federal prison for dodging taxes and stealing $12 million from his clients. Yeah. Including, if you scroll down, there's actually, um, like, courtroom sketches. So there's Michael Avenatti. If you keep going down, John, there's one of one of the clients that he stole from is a disabled man in a wheelchair. Not Yikes. good. Yeah. He actually tried to say to the judge that he should have a, a much shorter service because he had a rough upbringing. But then the prosecutors accused Avenatti of stealing $12 million from his client, clients, one who was a mentally ill paraplegic on disability allowances, and he argued that the true amount lost to his clients was total to $3.8 million, but that was thrown out. So now he's staring down 14 years in federal prison. And Todd, the fellow who was willing to pay for the jet in the documentary, said, Michael Avenatti can slate me off all he likes, but Google his name and you'll find out enough about him. I'm not looking at time behind bars. And the positive message of this is that the Pepsi-Cola guys, even though they didn't win their jet, even though it is a case law history in the law textbook saying they probably should have won the jet, but it was overthrown by a corporate judge, they're still friends to this day and they go around climbing mountains. So, though you may not get a Harrier jet for Christmas, ladies and gentlemen, you can still enjoy the power of friendship as long as you don't drink uh, Pepsi because, I mean, I'm a water enjoyer. I don't have a dog in the fight, but enjoy your Diet Coke, I guess. Merry Christmas. Thanks for watching that segment from the podcast Lotus Eaters. I hope you're having a very Merry Christmas right now. If you enjoyed that and want more, you can become a member over at our website for as little as £5 per month. And that means you can access all of our premium content, including this recent contemplations that Josh and Connor did, talking about whether we are a civilization of drug addicts due to medication. So that'll be very interesting. Check that out. And if you want to find more of what Josh is doing on the day to day, you can follow him over at Getter at Josh underscore firm. Thank you very much and take care.